from Ranana, retired Major General Yaakov Amidrol, Israel's former national security advisor. Uh, General Amidrol, thank you very much uh, for joining us now. Uh, how dangerous is the situation right now? How do you expect that Iran will retaliate for the killing of Qasem Soleimani? I'm not sure that the Iranians decided yet what and uh, where to react. Um, I'm sure that within the system will be uh, an argument between those who are uh, revenge motivated, uh, and you can hear it from what they just published, and those who are more sober and will say um, a war against America is not the interest of Iran. Who will win at the end? Because there is only one man who is making the decision. It's uh, Hamanei, the leader. Uh, who will win the argument within the system and what Khamenei will decide, it's unknown. Um, I think that the uh, walking assumption should be that the Iranians should, will do whatever they can to find the weak point in which they can um, make a big operation and to show that they will not um, giving up because of the assassination of uh, Surani, as important as the guy was. Well, at the moment, uh, Ayatollah Khamenei is talking about revenge. That their national security advisor says they're weighing up 13 different retaliation options. If you were advising Israel's government now, what would you say are the points where Israel might be vulnerable to an Iranian attack? Do you think one of the options could be an attack on the Israeli mainland? I don't say, my assessment is that they will not uh, attack Israel. They don't need uh, Israelis in the battlefield, the, it, it, America is big enough. You don't add mm -hmm. another enemy to the, to the battlefield. But uh, that should not be the assumption of the decision maker. The decision makers in Israel should think based on worst possible case and to um, take into account that the Iranians might be not so logic and react against Israel maybe because they can, maybe because they want, maybe because the combination between them um, and they didn't find something good enough in, in, within the American targets, uh, we should not count on the optimistic uh, assessment of mine, but on the contrary, on the worst possible case and to uh, be um, sensitive to preparations of the Iranians to try through the intelligence to understand what the reaction will be um, and if there is no enough uh, um, intelligence to take all the measures which are needed to um, defend the Israeli uh, uh, targets. And given that uncertainty, do you think the killing of Qasem Soleimani makes the Middle East a safer place? Was it wise or will this prove to be a mistake? It's not about making, the, with all due respect, it's not about making the Middle East safer. It will not solve any problem in the Arab states or even this, the problems of, of Iran. It is very important because this guy uh, was a center of many actions from um, Lebanon to Syria through Iraq into um, Yemen. He was responsible for the very aggressive policy of the Iranians outside um, Iran all over the Middle East, not only in the Middle East, but all over the Middle East. So the fact that he will not be anymore in the scene and, and um, will not uh, push the Iranians to areas which might hurt others, it's a good factor in the war against the aggressiveness of the Iranians. Will it change the policy of the Iranians? Probably not. Will they find someone that will enter to issues? They found one. Uh, when this guy, who was the deputy of Soleimani for so many years, will um, enter to his shoes and fulfill the shoes, uh, it's a question of time. My assessment, it's not days, it's months or even a year, because uh, he was a very talented uh, uh, person with special standing, charisma, um, he gained the trust of so many people. He had connections with so many uh, people that it taking time to get all the capabilities that he had and to be in the same level of 
uh, conducting operations. So I think it's a blow to the possibilities or the capabilities of the um, Al Quds forces outside Iran, not forever, not for eternity, but for a while. And I think it's a good result. The uh, Pentagon is now distancing itself from Trump's threats on Twitter to strike Iranian cultural heritage sites, admitting that would be uh, indeed a war crime. Do you think President Trump's aggressive rhetoric on Twitter against Iran is helping at the moment? I'm not an expert for Trump, and you have, you have to ask uh, Americans who understand the language and the culture of the White House, it's not my expertise. Uh, what I can say is that um, there are enough targets in Iran without going into such targets which are purely civilians. Uh, Iraq is now demanding that the United States pull its troops uh, out of Iraqi territory. Do you think in the end this will be Iran's big strategic victory, getting the U.S. to leave Iraq, turning it all into an Iranian sphere of influence? No question that if uh, the Iranians succeed to push the Americans out of Iraq or if the Americans decide to pull out of Iraq based on the circumstances, it will be a huge success for the Iranians. What they want to have and they are pushing all the time, all around, uh, not hesitating to make the most um, aggressive actions against civilians in Iraq, in Lebanon, everywhere where they want to control Iraq as they are controlling Lebanon. And they have almost full control of Lebanon, and the dream of Iran is to have such level of influence in Iraq. If the Americans um, are going to leave Iraq, that would be a huge success and for the Iranians. Okay, General Amidro, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your expertise about the situation in the Middle East.